Okay, today we're going to showcase the, um, the do-it-yourself SNES uh, reproduction board. And uh, to save time, I have already uh, programmed the ROM and I've already mounted the CIC. The CIC is like the security chip. And, and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount some capacitors. All right, get the easy stuff out of the way first. So the capacitors, um, there's 0 0.1 uh, microfarads and then there's a 22 microfarad. And you can tell the difference just because the 22 is a lot fatter than the, the 0.1s. Okay, so, um, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna put a little solder glob there. We're gonna take the 22 microfarad one, the fat one, and we're gonna put it right here. So I'm just solder globbing one side. I pick up the capacitor and I'm gonna heat up that very same glob and I'm just gonna slide it on. Okay, pretty easy. And when you slide it on, you wanna leave enough room on the other side of the pad so you can get solder to the other side. So I'm just gonna move this over just a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm gonna solder the other side. Just because I like a neat job, I'm going to go back and kind of clean up this other side. Okay. Easy peasy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the other, other capacitors too. So I'm going to put one glob there, one glob here. Now it's, it's a little easier uh, stability wise if this chip wasn't here because my board's kind of rocking but I, anyways I, I just I mounted it there it is and and so and the game I'm gonna make is a high map game so uh, there's two decoders and I'll go over that in just a minute um, so again it's it's helpful to have a pair of tweezers but you know some maybe needle nose pliers will will work fine so I'm just going to solder these on. Not going to be too careful with placement since, since this is just kind of a quick and dirty build. But I sure hope you can see this because my camera's kind of mounted precariously. And so. I like the surface mount capacitors. In fact, I think they're easier and even quicker than the through hole ones. Um, so, all right, so those are done. And just put a little solder on the other side now. going to worry too much about neatness although that is a big pet peeve of mine so anyways in this the capacitor has already been mounted for the uh, CIC so now all the caps are in now time to mount the parts okay so so I mount these in a particular order I, I, I've just found that after doing quite a few of these um, uh, it, it, it's just kind of easier because, you know, you flip the board over and whatever to put the resistor network. That's what this yellow thing is. Put the resistor network here, bend it over. Okay. And then I'm going to just put one solder, just kind of anchor it to hold it. And I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to do all the other holes. 
I suppose I could have all done them on the top side, but this is the way I've been doing it, so. Okay. That's on. Oh, what? What happened? Thought that was kind of shallow. Okay, this, this is the reason why you, this is why I should have done, I did the top hole first, but you know, I'll just bend it over. It kind of, it kind of fell out a little bit, which, so maybe my top hole solder wasn't uh, very good, but that's okay. I just bent it over a little more and we're good to go. All right, so these are the uh, diodes. The diodes have a little black band on them to, uh, to show you the orientation. The diodes are both the same. So we're gonna put them in here. I hope I'm keeping my board on camera. So. So again, they just, you just go in, bend your pins over. Uh, this is a 1K resistor. And the resistor goes here. So I tried to get this to where, you know, the parts would be easy to identify, the same. You know, it doesn't use as many parts. Um, you know, in other words, if you had threw all these parts in just a jumble, and then you didn't label any of them, you know, you would know what they are. For example, the surface mount capacitor, you know, the 22 microfarad one is the thicker one, and there's only one, and then all the others are the same. So I don't need a label that says, this is the 22 microfarad. You can just go, oh, it's the thicker one, so that's the 22. And so, um, uh, you know, same way, there's only one transistor. You know, the, the one transistor and, and it goes right here. You know, there's only one resistor network or, or in the case if they put two, they're both the same. So now the, now the transistor, what we're gonna do is, it's, it's, it's a pretty tall one. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull it out from the board just a little bit. And I'm just gonna bend it over flat face down that okay and I'm gonna kind of spread these pins this is probably the most difficult solder of the whole job because these pins are really close together and in my next board that I manufacture I'm gonna separate the pins so it'll be easier to solder but with these ones that are close together I'm going to uh, solder the outside pins Okay, just those two. I'm gonna go ahead and trim them. Now the middle one hasn't been soldered yet. Okay, so I'm gonna do the middle one on the top side. Just they're so close together. Um, you know, I'm trying not to short. You know, where solder shorts, shorts two two pins out. So. Okay, anyways, that appears to be easier to me, and um, so we're going with it. Okay, so since it's a, uh, the game I'm making is 32 megabytes, or it's, yeah, 32 megabits, 4 megabytes, I'm using the 27C322 EEPROM, and I am going to clean the pins. The pins on these, this is an old part, and even though it's new, it's still old. And so the, the pins get tarnished. And one of the best, really this is probably the biggest fail most people do. It, you know, they don't clean the pins, the pins are dirty. And then when you go to solder these on, the solder just looks like it's not, you know, fully merging with the pins, you know, it's just, you know, a lot of cold solder joints. And so, best way to do this, I have a little Dremel tool with a rotary pad. It's pretty, anyways, 
I'm just going to clean the pins real quick. So when I put this in, when I put that in, the solder is going to stick to that like glue. Okay, so now uh, the game I'm making is going to be high map. And therefore, I need that my decoder. Which one of these is decoder? This one. Okay, my decoder uh, goes into the high map spot. There's a low map spot, high map spot. And so, high map. So, high map. I'm going to flip it over, I'm going to solder these real quick. Now, if by chance, you know, you mount the decoder in the wrong spot, you don't have to unmount it. I mean, there's, there's only uh, two or three output pins, you know, you can just cut the legs and, um, you know, and Move, you know, and then just mount another decoder on the other side. You know, just as long as you cut the right, depending on, you know, which one was mounted wrong, it's either two pins or three pins, you know. But, again, that's more on, along the troubleshooting side. So these are the multiplexers. These are the, the um, 74 series, 257 chips. And so we're going to go here. So this, this, these two chips make the 16-bit ROM act like an 8-bit ROM, which is what we need. And so that's why we use them. A couple of anchor pins. I can make sure the chips didn't move. Nope, not good. So, okay, so mounting the chips. Again, this doesn't take very long. Um, and I wish my iron would get a little hotter. Make this a little easier but I'm kind of stuck with it right now okay so this chip here come on all right now the capacitors you know they're they're like filter capacitors the, the the small ones the 0.1 microfarads they're you know as a chip you know does its thing inside it uh, power level will vary depending on how active the chip is and these little capacitors are kind of meant to step in and keep the power level smooth they're not really a filter per se it can be but but um, and then the uh, 22 microfarad one, probably not needed on games that don't use SRAM. Uh, but this one here kind of helps the board do a kind of a easy, sh kind of, I don't know, maybe um, just kind of a slow shutdown maybe is the best way to describe it. You know, make sure the SRAM is done writing, you know, a save or, you know, before. I've, I mean, I've, with this, uh, capacitor in here I've changed the battery within 60 seconds you know unsoldered it soldered in a new one and the SRAM was still alive it still retained my data and that's that's because of that capacitor so anyways the multiplexers are in uh, I'm gonna do the bypass because this chip isn't needed except in rare circumstances what How'd that get there? 
shoot. Okay, well, a little solder. I don't know where that came from. Uh, okay, so we have to solder glob this anyways. This is for a 64K build, uh, SRAM build. So I bridged those three. This would be bridged only if you're using an FRAM, which is a ferromagnetic RAM. And we're not, so, so we don't have to worry about that. Grab a battery. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna put the battery in. Probably should do it after the SRAM, but whatever. pointy sticky things up so I'm gonna cut those off okay now the SRAM and we're gonna talk about the SRAM here so the SRAM is or FRAM for that matter either part but the SRAM is um, we we determine what the console sees. So if you have a 64K SRAM, but you know, you're making a game like Donkey Kong, which has a security check to see if, if the SRAM is bigger than 16K, then the game will fail. And so you can cut these two traces to make it 16K. But if you do that, you must also mount a second resistor network here, where, there. So the, the solder glob here is just so we don't have to mount that other part, you know, because for 64K SRAM, that's all we need to do. It's just that one, that one jumper. So let's solder this in. Try and be quick about it. You know, the example of the parts, you know, um, you know, there'll be two multiplexers and uh, only one um, decoder chip, you know, and the, on the board, you know, on the front, it tells you, the, you know, the chip numbers. So, so there's really, there shouldn't be any confusion on what chip goes where. And, um, All right, now, since the game I'm making is high map game, I have to set my address uh, jumpers here. So since it's high map, I'm gonna do these right here. Again, I'm doing this build on what what I would consider to be the most popular build. So there are other configurations uh, that we can talk about in future videos, but this, this is probably the most popular. And the instruction manual does cover a lot of the variances as well. So, okay, so um, while I'm soldering the ROM in, I've already cleaned the legs. Um, I'm going to talk about the SRAMs just a little bit more. So, the SRAM, you know, for example, it, let's say you have a 256K SRAM. And, you know, but your game, you know, only requires 64K. And so, um, you can use a 256K SRAM, you know, and the console can only, would only see uh, 64 of it. 
but the two address lines that are that are remaining that they're, they'd be called floating and the address lines can't float they have to be driven one way or another high or low uh, otherwise SRAM will go crazy and so uh, so if you use the 256k SRAM you know the physical part then uh, then you would need to mount this other uh, resistor network this other yellow thing here and that's so the address lines don't float um, but if you're using 256k for a game that requires 256k SRAM well then you don't have to mount that part and so likewise if you have a game like Donkey Kong Country come on you know that that it can't be any bigger than 16k then you're gonna whether you have a 64k part or um, or a 256k part it, you know it doesn't matter you're, you're you're gonna have to do the 16k cuts and you'll have to mount that extra part that resistor network so Um, you know, because you're you're removing those address lines from the bus, which make which they will float if you don't drive them one way or another, and so that resistor network, you know, drives those lines that would be open. So, okay, ROM decoder uh, chips SRAM transistor. Uh, address uh, selection. All right, should be good to go. Okay, so So Sailor Moon, it's a um, pretty easy game to, to get a save on, so we'll just verify the saves real quick. Come on. Let's go. Zelda would have been easier. Do page zero. Okay, so we made a save. Save game, there it is. Chapter one, her de destiny. Okay, so. Um, so there you have it. 
Um, sample build. This is Sailor Moon, obviously. Um, again, if your game, if, if you use a part, physical part that is, let's see, I have one right here. It's like, a, you know, where it's a 256K, you know, SRAM. 62, 256. If you were to use this part, then but the game is only going to be 64K, then you would mount this other resistor network here. And then the other thing is, is there's other pads on here, like there, and some of these little ones over here. You just don't really mess with those. Um, those are, you know, this U16. Uh, all that is, is for internal use. Uh, for and they're not needed or required for uh, making a single game. So just just to recap, you know you need the CIC for a four megabyte game. You need the multiplexers. Now the game doesn't have to be four megabytes, and you don't. I mean, you could make a one megabyte game using a four megabyte chip. You don't need to pad it. Most, 99% of the time, padding does nothing. It doesn't help you, doesn't hurt you. Um, it's just not needed. I mean, the game will never access part of the ROM beyond the game program itself. Yeah, right? Makes sense. The only time you would pad a ROM is if you had a really, really crappy design where you know upper addresses would be accessed accidentally, I guess. But uh, you don't need to pad stuff. That's just ridiculous. Um, anyways, so all these parts here, the battery, the diode resistors, the resistor network, the transistor, the decoder, those are only needed, and of course, you know, the SRAM, those are only needed if you're going to do a game that saves. If you wanted to do a four megabyte game that doesn't save, you would need CIC, of course, the two multiplexers, and this, and the ROM, and the ROM, and that's it. So you know, if you if you need to make a game that doesn't save, then you have one, two, three, four parts to put on. So um, if you were to use a twenty seven C one sixty ROM then you wouldn't mount these parts here, and you wouldn't need that. And it kind of goes over that in the manual. Uh, if you're, you're to use a 160 ROM, instead of instead of putting in you know the two uh, multiplexer chips, you would just do these solder jumpers here. You know, and there you go. Um, anyways, do it yourself, um, board. It's um, from several several builds I've made. It seems very solid. Uh, there's only there's one other aspect, and uh, since I'm making a really long ass video, I'll go ahead and cover it. The um, Ramtron F Rams, like 1608, is a um, 64k 8 bit. If it's 1808 part number, then it's a 256K 8-bit. Anyways, the Ramtron doesn't need a battery, and the Ramtron, you know, has a long lifespan, and um, essentially you would need to add one other part, and I'm not going to go into it on this video as far as the build, but the Ramtron, you would you would add another part here, not the 32, but a, but a zero, 00. So you add a part here, you would cut the number three. You don't need this, you don't need these, you don't need this, you don't need the transistor if you do a little jumper. Uh, and then you you would do a jumper here. But uh, anyways, the Ramtron, they're generally fairly expensive. Uh, but you can find them on eBay pretty reasonable. You know, like three dollars. And um you know, and SRAMs are like 250, so it's you know, it, it's a pretty good trade-off. You know, you'd never have to worry about your battery dying. 
uh, you know, as far as the build goes, it's probably a little less effort. Um, anyways, um, the board does support it. It's covered in the manual, and I'll just leave it at that. So SNES do-it-yourself board. Um, yeah, I like it.